Following on from the previous video, we got to this stage here where this can be rewritten as this, and uh, and this is very similar to uh, to this. So we we had to select an m, an integer m, such that m will be bigger than uh, than the absolute value of x. And uh, and if you look at this here, this can be broken up as uh, as one block. So uh, so so that's that's like five times four times three times two times one. That's that's this thing here, uh, and then uh, and then uh, well don't forget this block here is exactly the same as this block here. But then in in the previous video we said that um, well if if you look at if you look at this fraction here this fraction here uh, is is like this m plus one. Don't forget it's, uh, uh, our m is five. Don't forget five. So so it's like five plus one. But the the, the point here is that this fraction here if you compare it to uh, to four over m, which is this thing here, um, then 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 this fraction here, this fraction here must be bigger than this fraction here, and then uh, and then if if you look at this fraction, well this fraction here is is really four over m plus two. Well let's compare this fraction with four over m, or well that's this thing here. Well this fraction here, well four over four over here, m here. Because this, because this denominator is less than this denominator, that means this whole frac, the fraction as a whole will be bigger than, than this fraction here. So this fraction must be bigger than this one here. Well, if you look at this one here, um, if you look at four, uh, four over eight, four over eight, well, four over eight is really m plus three. Well, that's got to be less than or equal to, to this thing here, less than or equal to four over m. So, uh, so this fraction here will always be bigger or equal to this fraction here, and this one here will always be bigger than this fraction here, and so on. So, um, so, so if you look at this bit here, well, well, this whole thing here would be less than or equal to this whole thing here. Well, this whole thing here is in fact this thing here. So these two are, are pretty much or similar because if you look at this here, hang on. This is like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's your m factorial. Remember, this is our m. m is 5. And then what's, what's left would be 5, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Well, don't forget, you've got n terms, n number of terms. And then from here to here is m. Then what's left would be, would be n uh, minus m. So really, it's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So that's like 5 to the power of n minus uh, m. So that's this, this thing here. N, that's like 5 to the power of n minus 1. Up uh, n minus m. So th the point here is that this thing here, you can compare it to this thing here. And then we, we know that this thing must always be greater or equal to this thing here. Well, these two, well, the, the, the point here is that this thing is always less than or equal to this thing here, meaning meaning that this thing here will, will always be less than or equal to this whole thing here. Okay, so now now we, we know that this would be less than or equal to this thing here. So now use indices. Now use indices to tidy this up. So use indices to tidy this up. So um, So visualize it as one fraction, that's this bit here, but uh, multiplying with uh, with this fraction here, so that's this bit here, and then uh, when you have one over something, that's a negative version of this thing here. Well, it's just basically you using uh, indices to tidy this up. So now this becomes negative n, and then positive m, positive m. So now I uh, visualize it as as this over one over this thing here. But blah, blah blah, this gets multiplied to the top. That will then give you this. And then, and then, uh, and then, when when you get to this stage here, um, la later on we will need to take the limit. We will need to take the limit as n tends to infinity. Um, so you see, it is the n that's moving about. Uh, this thing here contains n because it contains n. This thing here contains n here, but this does not contain n. This does not contain n. So, so, so group all the n's together because later on we, we, we will need to take the limit as n tends to infinity. It, it, it will be the n that's moving about. It will, this thing here will move about. This thing here will move about because 
we are taking the limit as n tends to infinity. n is moving about. This thing is going to move about. This thing here is going to move about. This is a constant, a constant. So group them together. So that would then give us, give us this. So now, um, now this is the same as this. So wait there. So we are now at, uh, at this stage here. We are now at this stage here. So this, so this thing here is the same as this. It's the same as, it's the same as this. So basically, we've established that this thing here will be less than or equal to this whole thing here. Okay? So, uh, so this thing here is less than or equal to this thing here. So, so, but basically, this thing here is the same as this thing here. And then this thing is the same as this thing. But when, when you're over here, you've got the negative version of the exact same thing over here. So you can just say that this whole thing here is exactly the same as this, but stick a negative in front of it. So now, uh, now take, so, so, so now that we're here, take the limit of everything. Take the limit here. Take the limit as n tends to infinity. Take the limit as m tends Take the limit as, as uh, n tends to infinity here. This is a group where we can take a negative out here. So that becomes this thing here. And then uh, take the limit of everything basically. So now as, um, as n tends to infinity, um, this thing here actually heads towards zero because, wait up, because remember we, we have to select a, a value of m such that m will be bigger than, uh, than, than than the absolute value of x. Remember this? m, this is our m here, and this is our absolute value of x here. We have to select a value of m bigger than, than the absolute value of x. So this fraction here is less than 1. This fraction here, oops, uh, this fraction here is less than 1. And, and when, when, you, when you power this to, let's say, 9 to 9, um, it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, because, because 4 over 5 is less than less than uh, 1 and then when, when you take n towards infinity um, it's just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so back to here hang on, back to here uh, back to here take the limit of everything that will then take us to here but then when you look at this here because m is bigger than the absolute value basically this thing here is less than 1 and then and then you're powering you're, you're taking n all the way to infinity that means this thing here is heading towards 0 uh, and then this here is a constant, so zero times a, a constant is, is going to be zero. This thing here, this whole thing here, this whole thing here, this whole thing here will head towards zero. And then, and then if you look at the left hand side, the negative version of the exact same thing is over here. This is the, this is the exact same thing as over here, but then you've got a negative in front of it. So now, now, because we know that this is zero, this, this thing here, will be uh, 0 and then you've got your negative here, negative here, well that's going to be 0. So now now we know, well this thing being always trapped between 0 and 0, then that will mean that this will have no choice but to head towards 0. So the limit of, of, of this, of this, the limit of this sequence as n tends to infinity would be 0. Okay.